Hey everyone, it's Chris at saltwaterwitch.com and in this episode I'm going to look at uh, the Orion Nebula M42 in the SHO Hubble palette. I have been thinking about how to represent false color imaging for deep sky objects for a little while or how to best represent them maybe is, it, is another way to look at it and I've been keeping more of that abundant hydrogen green in the mix when doing SHO Hubble palette images where we map sulfur, hydrogen, and oxygen band passes to red, green, and blue, RGB. Because hydrogen is, by a wide margin, the most abundant element in the universe, and many of these nebulae are each two regions, which are vast expanses of ionized hydrogen, interstellar ionized hydrogen, there ought to be more green in SHO images than we normally see. It's become standard to go heavy on a sort of a rust red and deep blue with most of the green removed. On the other hand, all of these color choices are aesthetic choices. The images I'm posting come from data from three separate filters, HA, O3, and S2 normally. So in a sense, there are no incorrect color levels within reason. Especially for this target particularly, M42, you do see a lot of LRGB imaging. And, with, cor and with, you know, with the corresponding heavy reds and browns of band passes on the red end of the spectrum, heading off into infrared, most of my shots of Orion Nebula from past years has been in RGB with a luminance layer. I think that's pretty standard for a lot of uh, astrophotographers is to do this particular target, M42, in color. So in this first set, I have toned the hydrogen green way down. Actually, I've toned all the colors down until I'm just getting a nice green cast over everything. I found this pretty interesting. So I'm going to reprocess data from some recent targets and see how they turn out. I think the reasoning is sound that we should see more green in SHO, but we'll have to see how the images look. I know many handle this already by going with HSO to map HA to red, which makes a lot of sense, closer to where HA is on the uh, electromagnetic spectrum, even if we're putting sulfur in green with this pattern, which makes a little less sense. At the end of the day, though, it's still about how beautiful these images of nebulae look and how each of us measures that beauty. It could also be that dozens of others have gone through this exact cycle with color levels and patterns, and ended up back where we are today, simply because the stronger blues and reds are more appealing. I think one of the best things about this hobby slash obsession is that it's data driven. And when I get new data and I try and, and I try new techniques and I like what I see, I can go back and reprocess data and try these techniques on other targets. There's something very powerful about this. And here's M42 Orion Nebula with the stars removed. I was just playing around with this and I happened to happen to like it. I'm not a, usually a fan of star uh, you know, of astrophotography with stars removed. I, I think it lends itself well to some targets and others not so well, but um, I think it def definitely looks cool in some cases. So I used the star removal in Annie's Astro Actions in Photoshop for this, which gets you about 90% of the, the way there, with some cleanup around the remnants of larger stars. Well, the one thing I could say about this is it looks like H.R. Geiger's version of the Orion Nebula, which may or may not be cool, depending on your perspective. Back to my interest in uh, how to align colors with uh, narrowband data. Take a look at this one. This is, uh, this is what I mean by no incorrect color levels, um, because this is the same imaging data from the same stacked HA, O3, and S2 frames. I just went in a different direction with which band passed to stress, oxygen in this, in this case, with stronger blues. It's strange how the Running Man shape in SH2 279, the Running Man Nebula, that's the brightish cloud above Orion, only appears faintly in narrowband. And in Orion itself, on the lower right side, there's that weird chicken leg of hydrogen that now stands out behind the wispy pale clouds that ring the nebula. Here's the same data set in HSO with hydrogen alpha mapped to red in RGB, sulfur green, and oxygen blue. You could argue that this is slightly more natural as the hydrogen alpha line is off the red end of the visible spectrum at 656 nanometers, just the side of infrared. Mapping HA to red makes sense, but mapping sulfur to green, eh, not really, not so much. The sulfur line is also on the red end of the, end of the spectrum. 
which is why normal RGB images of most deep sky objects taken with, say, a DSLR or a one-shot color camera are usually very red. That's actually a little more natural. As usual, or has, as has been usual for the past several imaging runs, past dozen imaging runs, I'm using a William Optics GT81 uh, running at f4.7. I use the William Optics 0.8x flat 6A2. I'm using astronomic filters, HAO3S2, in a six, or that are 6 nanometer. Uh, Moonlight Focuser, ZWO ASI120MM Mini for the OAG. Uh, my, in, my primary camera is uh, a Z, ZWO ASI1600MM Pro, and I alternate between uh, an Orion Atlas EQG and an iOptron CEM25P with this uh, setup. Both work very well. I, as usual also, I stack in DSS, and I process in Photoshop CC 2019. Uh, that's it for this episode. I'll be back for more. Clear skies, everyone.